<clears throat> just waiting on you. I'm thinking. Are you thinking? Yeah, I'm, I don't know what to say. What's up, everyone? Welcome to The Wrap, the show where we recap last Sunday's sermon and we do a little bit more of a, a deep dive or maybe hit it from an angle that we uh, really didn't get a chance to. I say we like I was up there with him. I was definitely not. This is really, you know, for Pastor Chris. Speaking of, with me is Pastor Chris. Welcome. Oh, thank you. Yeah. And uh, I'm Jared. I'm on staff here as well. And so uh, um, it's good to be with you again. You know, we're about to launch the campus here in about two months or so. So eventually you're going to have to say I'm... I'm Jared. I'm campus pastor down at Boco and invite our Boco family to come on in and be part of this with you, right? Because you're going to be on this show with me like on a regular basis. Now. Right. Just like we had it written up in the script, he did it for me. And so, <laughs> so I didn't have to. So, uh, but welcome everyone. Good to have you again. And so, uh, as you know, last, last sermon, we, uh, it was on, uh, um, oh goodness. I, where is it? There it is. There it is. I found it. Uh, it was about uh, not being shaken in your faith. You can faith. tell he paid a lot of attention to the sermon. Hey, I got three chances. So, but uh, it's on not being shaken, knowing where you're, where you're grounded and when things aren't going your way, exactly where you can lean. And sometimes it's easier said than done. Would you agree? Absolutely. And so, uh, <laughs> so one of the things that I'd like to uh, start off with is what I love about uh, Pastor Chris's sermons is that he really... Uh, breaks them down in a way that it allows us to take it home and to not just feel like we've learned something, but then we can go and we can apply it, which, I mean, that's one of the ways in which we distinguish between teaching and preaching. And so um, once I find my, once I find my spot, and so one of the things that you brought up, don't laugh at me, is that we are <laughs> to be an accountant and to uh, uh, count Christ worthy to lay our life down. And as you were speaking about this piece, one of the things that I thought about was, is how different life is now mm. compared to That's good. what it was like. Before um, you became a Christian? Before, not for me, but, but 2,000 years ago. Oh, okay. Me too. But, uh, um, and how they lived out Christianity so different than I think we have to today. We're so... Yeah, well, that's true too. Yeah, yeah we're so blessed today. And, uh, and so when we say things like laying your life down, we often mean that symbolically, don't we? <laughs> And so, uh, and they were literal. They they had to be, and uh, because they had to take a stand. And so, one of the things that I was hoping that maybe you could share some thoughts on is how can we, with that same mindset, with that same intensity, mm. lay our lives down. What that looks like for us today. Mm. Mm. One, when you're surrounded by fellow Christians who are not judging you, at least in regards to being a Christian, but I suppose in the face of the culture as well is. How can we lay our lives down? What does that look like for us today? No, man, that's 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 a great question, actually, and it's very deep. On, um, I, I think what you just said there at the end of the question is the key for us in, in modern day. At least, let me say it this way: for those of us who are watching this from North America, yeah, all right, and in some that's that's a good point. More civilized. Um, uh, countries that mm -hmm. watch us online. We have many folks who watch us online that are in countries, third world countries and other countries that do not have the freedom to worship Jesus mm. in the same manner that we do here in America or in Europe, right? But we have folks who watch us from some very persecuted mm. countries of the world uh, as far as in relation to persecuting Christians and not being very open to the Christian message. Those folks... Uh, and those of you who are watching, we honor you. We pray over you. Mm, amen. May the Lord protect you and guide you and strengthen your faith. Um, we have folks who watch us in countries where literally serving Christ on a daily basis, they are laying their life on the mm. line. That's what Paul was doing. I mean, when we come to this passage, it's Acts chapter 20. The key is verse 24 here where Paul says, I count my life to mean nothing for me. That is an accounting term. That's where I took this mm. and said, we have to face life like an accountant. Paul said, I count my life to mean nothing to me. I'm willing to lay it down. I, in other words, I count Jesus more worthy to lay my life down than to take care of my life. In fact, this is what Jesus was teaching when he said in Luke 9, if you want to come follow me, pick up your cross right. and come follow me. We, in our 
context generally look at that as like, oh, if I serve Jesus, I may I may have some people laugh at me. I may have some folks to reject mm-hmm. me when I tell them I go to church. They may make fun of me. And that's really, I mean, we're not talking about physical death. Right. When Jesus said that to the disciples, they were seeing it in the shadow of Romans crucifying Jews. Right. It was a death sentence. When Paul said this in Acts 20, verse 24, he's speaking to the elders of Ephesus, whom he is going to say right after this, you will never see my face again. The Holy Spirit has already warned me that chains and imprisonments await me. He is headed to Jerusalem where he's going to be arrested for the first time. Mm -hmm. He eventually, a few years later than this, will die for preaching the gospel. He's literally saying, if I die, Jesus is worth it. So we have some who watch us in countries that that's literally what they're saying every single day that they live out their faith, right? For us, uh, we don't, especially here in America, we don't feel that pressure. Mm -hmm. We feel the pressure of dying for Christ is hurting our our likes on social media, right. our reputation. We may get some goofy looks we may, at the we supermarket. We may get made fun of. Yeah. We may have some family mm-hmm. who, let's just be honest, we'll have some family who won't support our decision to follow Christ. I know some of you watching, you've probably had family members or friends walk away from you, distance you in relationship because of your faith in Jesus. Now, that's not dying physically, but it is a sense yeah. of death into a relationship or you know, even to our own self-esteem at times. Here's what Paul is saying. Whatever cost we have to face at the end of the day, if our life is devoted to Christ, the attitude of facing whatever we have to face, we have to face it of saying, Christ who died for me on the cross, Christ who paid for my sin debt, Christ who rose from the grave, is worth whatever sacrifices I have to personally make to live for him and to honor him with my life. That's so good. And one of the, I think, most incredible pieces, or one of the most incredible parts of of the entire story of Christianity is that it is all about grace and forgiveness and not measuring up to the standards that we so want Mm -hmm. to, to reach. And yet, it is in this relationship that we count our life meaningless in the sense of pushing forward, counting our life as worthless, when we could have really just thrown our hands up and said, I'm saved by grace, this is now for me, Mm -hmm. and it is what it is. You don't have to do more for salvation. But what I love about Paul is he didn't keep it to himself. He knew there was a world out there that did not know. They Mm -hmm. they had no knowledge of salvation. They had no knowledge of the forgiveness of sins. Mm -hmm. And so it is for this mission um, that he he gave his life for. It is so that other people could feel the same. And, you know, that segues into point number two, that you must be a runner. You Mm -hmm. should run your race. And this is, this is what Paul talked about. He wanted to run his race diligently. And I, I have to confess that growing up, I sometimes wondered if he was talking in a sense of, I have to do enough things Mm -hmm. to count myself worthy. And I can imagine that for Paul and having the background that he, that he had um, in the law. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can imagine living your life very strict uh, by the book. And then one day Jesus comes along and he says, just have faith in me. I've taken care of it. What is Paul now to do with his effort? Mm -hmm. How can Paul now express his love, express his devotion, express his loyalty? And I think one of the ways in which he wants to do that is by running his race. One, just out of love, not out of necessity. But then, of course, out of trying to get that message out to those who do not have it. Because Paul is saved by grace, but no one else knew it. No one else knows grace. And so that's I think that's one of the ways in which we can continue to run our race, knowing that people don't have that knowledge. Yeah. We have that knowledge, but people don't always have that knowledge. And so, yeah, I mean, when you think about it, Paul is the one who will, and you know, he was so passionate about being saved by grace. And he would write to the Ephesians, You're saved by grace, not of your works, least anyone can boast, because it was absolutely the opposite of everything mm-hmm. he was raised to mm-hmm. believe, right? I mean, we had to keep the law and we have to obey certain things in order to be made righteous. Right. 
uh, Paul will teach us about the great exchange that actually when you come to faith in Christ, Jesus makes a great exchange. He took our sin and he gives us his righteousness. And what do you do for someone mm-hmm. who has loved you so much that they have forgiven you freely without any strings attached and given you grace? Uh, and then you add that to this is God giving you this grace and forgiveness. What do you do? Well, what Paul is saying is I devote my life to him, yeah. right? No, it's so I, I'm good. going to serve him not because I have to, not because I'm earning the right to go to heaven. You can't. If we could get to God any other way other than simply the grace of God, then Jesus going to the cross was a horrible joke God played on his son. Mm. But if you truly understand grace, it doesn't make you say, well, I'm just going to, I'm saved by grace. I'm going to live my life or I'm going to go and sin all I want to. If you truly understand grace, you don't want to sin. Absolutely. It changes your motivation. And for Paul, he says, now all of a sudden, I'm setting my eyes on the end prize. The end prize wasn't if I work hard enough, if I run fast enough, I might get to go to heaven. Right. For Paul, the end goal was, and he would write about this, is one day when every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. It was standing before the Lord. And to the Corinthians, Paul would talk about how he wanted to stand one day and hear the Lord say, well done, and the rewards that come from a life that's been devoted. Absolutely. To the Lord. You know, he, he made this comment. He says, I want, he's, he wanted to run his life in such a way that at, at the judgment seat of Christ, when he stood before the Lord, he didn't want all of his life to burn up like wood, hay, and stubble. Mm-hmm. He wanted to present it to Jesus like gold, precious jewels, precious stones, he wanted his life to bring honor to the one who saved him by grace. That's so good. I, I think maybe you at home listening to this, it, if you could join me in a, in a, in a thought experiment maybe even, where it, when you sit down and you think about your shortcomings, anytime you've ever been embarrassed because of your actions, maybe you've hurt people, um, the things that keep you up at night, and then just imagine Jesus specifically to you, because a lot of times we talk about this as a collective, which is true, but individually for you specifically, imagine Jesus coming to you and saying, everything that you've ever done, I have now made right. Mm. And that weight of forgiveness has to be so heavy. And then imagine saying, what can I do in return? And he says, nothing. Mm. I've done it all. How can you experience such transformation and not want to give back, not want to run the race, not want to count your life worthless. Uh, You want to give back. And so, um, no, I love that. And so, um, number three, being a witness, Mm -hmm. because this is something that we get to experience, and this is something that there are people out there that have not experienced this. They do not know grace in the way that we know grace. Um, And it is a shame. It's 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 so sad. And so I can say that for me, one of the things that keeps me going, one of the things that motivates me to, as you put in number three, be a witness, is I think of who brought me to Christ, Mm -hmm. Um, and I think of my life before, and I think of my life after. And I have friends who have told me, Jared, I'm glad I'm not called to ministry. (laughs) That seems difficult. Now we're all called to ministry, right? Right, right. But. I don't want to be so selfish with, with what God has done for me. Right. I, lo- I love the verse you use here in Acts chapter 4, verse 20. It says, we are unable to stop speaking about what we have seen and heard. That's right. And so that's the heart that, that we need to have. Yeah, right. I mean, let's think about this. If you're truly overwhelmed by grace, it compels you mm. to set your eyes on the end Go One day I'm going to stand before the Lord. I want my life to honor him. So what are you going to do between now and then? You're going to want to go share Mm -hmm. everything you can about this God who saved you. You want to tell others about Jesus. You want to, you want them to go to church with you. You want them to do Bible study with you. You want to just to hear your story, right? Mm -hmm. You want to go be a witness. Paul said there in Acts 20, he said, I don't count my life to mean anything to myself. I want to finish the course. There's, we're setting up the runner theme. He said, I want to, I want to finish my course that the Lord Jesus has given me. And then he said this line, and I want to testify to God's grace. And as we, right, are overwhelmed by God's grace, what do we want to do? I mean, it's not even like, oh, well, that's a church program. No, this isn't a church program. This is hearts overwhelmed by grace. 
we want to offer our testimony. Absolutely. We want to tell people about God's grace. Yes. And that leans to, you know, the fourth point that I shared. Right. Right. Was then we want to be a herald. Right. And, and all a herald is, is someone that then represents the king and goes and tells people what yeah. he has to say. So yeah. it's like, I want to share yeah. with people about Jesus and then I want to represent him well. Absolutely. That's one of the. And, and, and Paul's doing this in light of knowing that he's going to have suffering in this world. And that may seem like a burden from time to time, but it is such a blessing. It's an honor to be able right. to do that. I mean, this is how we can put number three into practice, how we can be a witness. Um, one of my favorite theologians, um, brilliant guy. Uh, I love listening to him. But when he tells his story about his conversion, mm. he wasn't raised in a Christian home. And he said he sat behind this girl in class. Can't remember her name. I heard the story a few times because I love it. And he says she was always so happy. And, and one day just annoyed him. And so he asked, <laughs> why are you so happy all the time? And she said, because I know Jesus. And you can know him too. And he said, why would I want to do a thing like that for? Now let that sink in for a moment. There are people out there. Mm-hmm our neighbors, our friends, our family, who do not know why they would even care. Right. And so he says, why, or, yeah, why would I want to do a thing like that for? Why right. would I want to get to know him? And she says, because he loves you. Yeah, that's good. And he says, it, hits him, it hit him like a ton of bricks. Yeah. That that realization set in, and sometimes that's all it takes. That's right. And you will have people who scoff at that, maybe to your face, right. but you don't know the seed that you planted. That's right, that's good. And so um, I, love, I love that piece that's there good. being a herald. Absolutely. <laughs> um, you got anything else? Well, Any other I thoughts? Would just say, I just say, you know, as, as you think through this message, if you've not watched it yet, go ahead and uh, go to our YouTube or our website, uh, yourcpc.church, watch the sermon, and think about this. And here's, here's the big kicker from the weekend, is that we can't, we can't foresee tomorrow. Paul didn't know that he was going to be arrested he just said, I just know the Holy Spirit's put this inside me. I know chains and afflictions are waiting for me. Everywhere I go, the Holy Spirit tells me problems are coming, right? Right. Now, this I'm not trying to be a downer here, but I'm just saying what Paul was saying was is you don't know what's around the corner. You don't know what you're going to face tomorrow. It may be a good day, maybe a bad day. We all have suffering. It rains on the just and the unjust. But having um, the predetermined mindset – to not be shaken no matter what comes our way is what I think the message is here. Mm-hmm. Paul made a decision early on, no matter what life threw at him, Jesus was worthy for him to lay his life mm-hmm. down for. He was going to set his eyes on the end go. One day I'm going to stand before the Lord, and so I'm going to live my life in a way that I'm not ashamed when I get there. That's right. So what am I going to do between now and then? I'm going to be a witness for him. And I'm going to represent him well. And yeah. here was the big takeaway. When you have confidence in who he's called you to be, and you make a commitment to this, something amazing happens. It's only a gift of the Holy Spirit. It fuels a sense of courage inside of us. Remember this same Paul from prison, just before Nero would have him beheaded, writes to a young preacher boy named Timothy, and he says to him, God has not given you a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and of a sound mind. This is written from a man waiting to die. And he says, I'm not afraid of the future. And we shouldn't be. That's right. We should have power, love, and a sound mind, predetermined. Mm. Jesus is worth it. One day we're going to stand before him. Let's live our lives so we don't have to be ashamed of it. Let's witness for him and represent him well. And if we do, no matter what comes, we won't be shaken. Amen. That's good. And if you're listening to this and you think, you know what, guys, that sounds great, but I don't know if I'm ready to do something like that, I encourage you, get alone with the Lord. Let him remind you of the things that he's done in your life and believe in faith that he can do that for somebody else and let him build that courage. Be courageous. And so with that, we love you all. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you next week.